Good afternoon, my name is Anna Williams. I'm the Finance Director for Global Energy Development and uh, Steve Voss is our Managing Director. We're going to be tag teaming a bit during the presentation. Um, here we go. Um, on the screen and in your handouts, we've got a list of our Board of Directors and other personnel who make up our Executive Management of the company. But who is Global uh, Energy and uh, what do we do? I will tell you, Global Energy is, uh, first off, a cash flow positive, profitable oil producer uh, in South America. Specifically, we explore for, develop, and produce oil in the country of Colombia. Um, what makes us, or what makes Global unique as compared to other oil companies is, uh, I would say, first off, um, again, uh, for a company our size, and we are a small cap company, we are an AIM listed company, uh, to be profitable, historically profitable, and cash flow positive, um, as well as to have a significant amount of oil inventory, meaning um, proved and probable reserves, or 2P reserves, approximately 88 million barrels of oil in the ground, um, provides us, we feel like, uh, or sets us apart from other oil companies uh, listed on AIM. Um, so we have substantive operations as well as we feel like significant upside potential. Um, here's just, um, we've got some uh, statistics um, that will represent, again, what I've been saying about for us from an operational standpoint as well as a financial standpoint. Uh, Global has been listed on AIM for over 10 years. We are not a new or startup company. Um, Global holds five uh, contracts within the country of Colombia. We operate all of our contracts. We also own or hold 100% working interest in all of our uh, contract areas. Again, for a company our size, that is fairly unique. Um, uh, we put out our interim financials last week, and uh, you will see demonstrated in our financials what's been our focus um, really all along, but uh, specifically over the past while, focusing on things that we know that we can control. Obviously, for an oil company, your, your main variables are your production as well as your price. So what we have focused on was various projects related to cost, um, specifically operational cost, in other words, how much does it cost to lift out that oil and to transport it to sale, so our operational cost reduction proce uh, projects, as well as administrative costs, anything and having to do with overhead. Um, all of those projects coupled with um, the additional production increase that we saw in the first half of the year were major contributing factors uh, for us to improved operating profits and cash flow from operations. Uh, here you'll see just a snapshot of our uh, financials. I mean, overall, we've had very, we've had good trends. It was a very respectable first half of the year. As you'll see from the slide and, and in the financials, uh, uh, gross production was up 16%. Cost of sales for the reasons I just talked about, various projects that we've um, completed and some still we have yet to go, but overall cost of sales was down by roughly 13%. Uh, that led to gross profit, an increase of 22%. Uh, we had a gross profit of 7.2 million and profit before tax of 4.1 million. Uh, not listed on here, but um, just as um, also uh, our cash flow from operations, again, another good trend. We were up as compared to our prior year period. Um, one thing, too, I will say is uh, Global has historically been uh, conservative in its uh, use of and, I guess, in sourcing out its capital uh, for oil companies, obviously very capital intensive, taking capital and putting it back into the ground in its capital expenditures. Global has historically used um, cash on hand and cash flow from operations with a small layer of debt to finance those capital expenditures. We have not historically gone to the market to raise capital or to dilute shareholders by raising equity and putting that into the ground. 
Um, at the beginning of the year, we had debt outstanding of $17 million. Uh, that debt uh, was mostly current um, in 2013. We refinanced that debt. And um, during the first half of the year, we paid down $2 million in principal. Uh, at the end of September, which is shockingly next week, uh, we'll be down another million and a half. Um, and by the end of the year, we'll be down to $12 million. So that's a roughly 30% reduction in our debt structure over the year. Um, right here, I will actually stop for a second um, because hopefully you're hearing and seeing in the financials that it sounds like a a pretty good uh, company, um, but maybe ringing in your head is, hmm, Columbia, though. Um, uh, that we have, as we talk to people, no, there is not a lot of familiarity with the country of Colombia. So I will just take a second to say that uh, most of the time when people think about Colombia, they think about guerrilla warfare, they think of unstable government, even possibly civil unrest. Um, I will tell you, we, a global, has been in country for more than 20 years. Um, in that time, we have never had a significant security incident. We have never had a, um, any kind of major shut-in time because of any kind of civil unrest. I will tell you, the country of Colombia is night and day different from where it was 15 or 20 years ago from a security standpoint. The security is much, much better than it was. We're in areas of the country that have really little security issues. Um, I will also say, and I know Hannah mentioned this a minute ago, is that the, in, the energy industry in Colombia, it's booming. Um, uh, Ten years ago, the country of Colombia was an importer of oil. Fast forward 10 years, and they haven't hit, but they're continually striving to work towards that million barrels of oil per day uh, in production. So it's come on strong, especially in the last three to four years. So just as a note for Columbia, we feel like it's a very good place to be, and that's why we're there. So what next? Um, uh, where are we headed? Um, Global has basically two sets of assets, one being our producing properties, which was just quantified in the financial statements that you saw. Um, they are our producing assets that are in an area of the country called the Llanos Basin. Um, we, as you'll see, as one of our uh, three-pronged strategies is to continue to be profitable, continue with our cash flow from operations to make certain that we are eking out you know, every um, bit of profit as, uh, as, as high as possible from those operating properties. Next, though, is on the other side of the country, which is in an area referred to as the Middle Magdalena Valley. We have two contract areas that make up, uh, I would say, you know, 90% of that oil inventory I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, we have two contract areas that really are the key to our long-term value. We have most all of the production in one area, but we have a significant amount of, un, uh, of proven, proved and probable reserves that need to be accelerated in development. Um, if you look at the market cap and if you run the metrics, you'll see that you know, our market cap is valued either at or below basically just what we're producing today. So in other words, the market really has given zero value to the significant amount, the millions of barrels that we have in our two contract areas being Boulevard and Boca Chico. So our two-pronged strategy there, you'll see on the slide, number one is, is to enter into a strategic alliance, so to speak, either financial or operational, is to come alongside and to accelerate the development of the reserves at Boulevard, as well as to enhance our ongoing production in our Boca Chico contract areas, both very oil-rich areas. So on that note, I'll uh, hand it over to Steve to talk about both Boca Chico and <coughs> Boulevard. Thank you, Anna. You might be curious as to why the need to accelerate development of Boulevard, and you might be curious about why, in fact, we're looking for partners. We have a project uh, which is described in great detail on our website, by the way. We have our Boulevard development plan listed there as of last week. And what I'll tell you is that plan features 250 wells to be drilled. It will recover 
with those 250 wells, about 350 million barrels of oil. The peak production rate will reach over 180,000 barrels a day according to this plan. That is a large scope project for any company of any size. We're a small independent. We obviously need larger companies to come in and assist us in developing this, this project. So part of the effort is underway now. We have uh, utilized the services of Jefferies International, which is one of the larger ENP focused financial advisory firms in the world. They're doing us a very good job. They're dealing with two types of uh, prospective partners. One, the major companies. The major companies are looking for different kinds of project characteristics compared to the independents. Uh, the, the majors would be looking for much larger acreage positions. They would be looking for long-term development plan uh, or opportunity in that acreage. And generally, what they would focus on is increased reserves and reserve growth as compared by contrast to the smaller independents or the mid-sized companies in this industry who are much more focused on smaller acreage positions and more immediate production growth. That's the objective of most independents uh, because that's really how they're valued anymore in the market, which is so many dollars per producing barrel. So that's important to them. So the process is ongoing. It's comprehensive. We, we do believe we need a, a partner, and that will be something that you'll see more progress on reported over the next several months. Now, as we continue forward, Let's look a little bit at the characteristics of the Boulevard Project in the context of where we operate in Columbia. Anna mentioned that we're in the Middle Magdalena Valley. Uh, the Middle Magdalena Valley is about 500 kilometers long. It's about 60 kilometers wide. It sits between two of the major mountain regions of the Andean chain in Columbia. As a consequence, it has been an accessible area for development to the industry. It is connected by flatlands to the coast, so there's ease of highway transportation. We have some developmental advantages as, as a consequence in our part of the Middle Magdalena Basin, where we're located at the very north end of that basin, simply because as compared to operating in the so-called Eastern Plains or the Llanos of Colombia, you have to cross mountains to get your oil cargoes to market. That is a difficult problem. It's very expensive. So we have some cost advantages, logistical advantages where we're located here. You might also note that this area is populated by a number of large, independ large independents, but especially some of the super majors. And that is probably more uh, accurately detailed shown here in this activity map of the Middle Magdalena Valley. We're the smaller acreage area bounded in red to the north. You see some larger blocks around us that are occupied by Exxon, Shell, ConocoPhillips, uh, the super majors plus a smattering of smaller independents in this area. Um, these companies, especially the majors, are about to drill some 25 wells in and around our block over the next year or two. We are receiving some information about some of the preliminary results in these wells that are occurring currently. That has led us to revise to some degree the development plan that we utilized earlier in the year to a plan that features um, vertical drilling instead of horizontal drilling. And again, if you want those details, I encourage you to go to the website um, and look at the develop, development plan in detail. Again, um, going correctly here. Another piece of information that is important for you to understand is the nature of the information flow that started to arrive during the middle part of this summer. The information flow consisted some, to some degree of the Energy Information Agency of the United States publishing details about the scope and nature of this particular opportunity in Colombia. That being as you can look in some of the detail of this text, that Columbia was identified as, a, as holding world-class prospective shale, gas, and oil properties in the middle Magdalena Valley. Specifically, 
it was identified as, ha as having approximately 4.8 billion barrels of oil that is recoverable in the northern half of the valley. Now you compare that to the numbers that we have of about 350 million barrels recoverable and you see that we're in the range of holding something less than 10 percent of those recoverable barrels. Now this is something that's been estimated by the U.S. government. It's uh, work that they provided independent of the industry and if that is in fact going to be the case and this is a very oily area by that I mean there are about 40 different fields that are producing in this part of Colombia, specifically here in the northern end of the basin. So it is highly likely that the oil in place numbers, the Energy Information Agency is estimating that they're probably pretty reasonable. The recoverables seem to be reasonable given the experience of the industry back in Texas where there's a lot more experience in developing shale oil. So we're very excited about the information flow being made available during this time because we've been using that to talk to partners about the specifics of our own project. They mentioned also world-class stack shill oil plays at the very bottom of this text and what that means is that there are many separate reservoirs that add to the uh, recoverable oil that we have in our boulevard block. We have five altogether. Those five will be developed simultaneously, produced simultaneously, and the details of how we do that are provided again in our report that you'll find on the website. Just a brief uh, comment about the points that Anna was making concerning the other properties that we have in the company over in the Llanos area, in the eastern part of the country. Uh, again, we have additional room to increase our operating margins over the next six months to a year. Uh, that's the blocking and tackling part of our business as American football is prone to use in their descriptions of the hard, less illustrious work, but nevertheless important work. We will be reducing some of our water disposal costs, electrifying surface facilities to cut diesel fuel costs and removing a lot of facilities that we rented temporarily in the early development of these projects. That will continue to generate higher gross profit margins and will continue to provide the kind of cash flow that we need to move forward with our projects slowly if necessary by ourselves, and more rapidly with partners as is our objective. The other project in the valley that Anna mentioned is the Boca Chico project area. That is an area that is south of Boulevard by about 125 kilometers. It is an area of heavy oil. Uh, we have already drilled some wells in the, in the Boca Chica area. The field name is the Torcas field. It contains um, substantial amounts of oil in place. Uh, we are in the process of utilizing some new technology that uh, was developed by the Canadians, which requires us to basically produce oil and sand together, which will increase the production rates of the reservoir. To do that, we have to have special pumps. And those pumps uh, are now available to us, and we're going to be deploying that kind of equipment into these wells over the next six months or so, and developing this very large project, which is about probably half the size of our uh, Boulevard Reserve area. Anna? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, really, just to finish up, um, I think just going back to again what makes Global unique. Again, that we are profitable. We're a cash flow positive uh, operation, um, and also too, as Steve talked about, we have significant upside potential with these contract, these oil rich contracts that we have with Boulevard and Boca Chico. The next two slides, basically, if you're an oil or oil and gas company, you can value a company a lot of different ways. The next two slides basically just put a pencil to, uh, if you looked at 
a, a company and say, you know what, I really don't care what you have in an inventory. For whatever reason, I don't think you're going to develop it. Um, show me what you're producing today and put a valuation to that. You would take an outside industry metric based on your flowing barrels per day. It's almost like your cash flow. Apply that value, which would be, again, an industry value used to uh, in other acquisitions or divestitures, what was paid on a flowing barrel per day basis. Multiply that times the flowing barrels per day that I have and compare that to my market cap. As you can see um, from the slide, hopefully, is that really we are valued at or really below what we're even valued at from what's already flowing out of the ground, okay? On the next slide, now this is where probably every oil and gas company wants to be valued, okay? That says, you know what, there is value associated to those oil barrels that I have in the ground. So if you used my 2P, my proved and my probable reserves, and again, you took an outside industry metric for Latin America, and you said, all right, what have other companies paid for their barrels of oil in the ground in an acquisition or a divestiture? You applied that same metric to my barrels of oil per day, divided it by my number of shares. The far right-hand column is where you would see the value associated with my barrels of oil in the ground. Okay, the far left hand and middle are the values equivalent to what my market cap translates into by those same uh, barrels in the ground. All that to say is that we feel like there is, again, a range of value. When we can show that we can, like Steve said, we can either do it slowly, which is what we've done in the past conservatively through cash flow from operations, or find a strategic partner um, operationally and or financial to come alongside so that we can begin to accelerate the development. I think this slide shows just by the facts alone or by the math alone that there is quite a bit of range for upside potential.